hey, thanks for coming. I wanted to make a video about a diabetic wound healing. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I now got a second one. This was a complete surprise to me in the sense that I didn't expect it. And I'm a spiritual person, so I was trying to figure out what was the karma that was involved. And finally, the conclusion I came to was that the reason this came back to me was because I didn't tell people before how to get better. And also, too, it made me understand a little bit better what the medical system is making a mistake in how to deal with it. So, let me start out by saying, okay, there's lots of information on diabetic wounds and you can go and see and most people don't like to look at them because it's a problem to look at. And so I was thinking, okay, who am I making this for besides myself? And the conclusion I came to, I want to tell people that have a diabetic wound now, how can they can improve their healing process. Now, if you're diabetic, then, which means you have high blood sugar, you have high resistance to uh, utilizing sugar, so the sugar remains in your system and causes a breakdown of the healing process. Okay, that's been well documented. And so the standard protocol, as far as I understand it, is, is you stay off the foot as much as possible. Sometimes even they make a, give you what's called a walking boot or crutches. And periodically when you go in to see the doctor, they'll do what's called a do breathing process. And so now, it wasn't until just the other day that I realized why they do that procedure. Okay, one of the other things they'll do for you is they'll give you an antibiotic, a very strong one usually. Okay. Okay, so that's the process. Let me tell you why they make such a big deal about it. I'm going to show you something. Yesterday, see the tip of my finger? I cut it off with a very sharp knife. Not so much the, down to the bone or anything, but what it made me realize is how much I'm impacted by treating this wound that I have. And so I put a band-aid on and everything and it was fine. But what I noticed was I didn't didn't rinse that hand because I had the band-aid. If, if I got it wet I wouldn't want to change it. And the reason why Doctors are so nervous about these diabetic wounds as they take a long time to heal. And I didn't realize until this time around how essentially the doctors are shooting themselves in the foot. That's my pun. The reason they do the debriding is they're terrified of the wound being infected. 
So what happens when you start to heal is that the bottom of the hole in your foot closes slower than the skin above it. So the skin actually starts to close in. And what they're completely afraid of is that the uh, wound will close, there will be an infection inside the foot, and then they're going to have to open it up and start all over. It'll get worse. So, the, so they circumvent the healing process in order to be sure there's no infection. Okay, so the last time I had this, what I learned was it's extremely difficult to prevent the foot from being infected. And I was working. The other thing is they tell you don't go working, don't go walking on the foot because this is going to make it worse. Okay. The So that they, they will get a diabetic boot, they will get a, I had, I had a wound vac the last time around, I'm not doing it now, because the wound vac, you had to put a, a, a plastic around your leg and tape it off and it still got wet. Okay, and, and the wound vac is supposed to suck stuff out and give you a positive suction so the, so you won't get infected. Maybe I should make a mention this the other day. The other day, I went in. The new technique is they put a skin, artificial skin section on there, and so we'll see. And I'm not supposed to take a shower for three days. Tomorrow will be the last day. So we'll see if that does any better. But let me go back to what I figured out: how to knock your infection rate down to zero. Okay, so last time, last year, um, when I went to see the doctor, he did a culture of my foot because he said it was getting infected, even though I was taking an antibiotic. And it turned out what he said was, "Oh, well, you're getting, you're getting that, you're getting an infection from bacteria from poop." That's how he said it. Okay, so it was after that, okay, so I had already been, had everything closed in a little bit, but it was going very slowly. And one of the things, okay, so I'm a mathematician, so I look at things a little bit differently than other people. And what I figured out, from that debreeding procedure the other day is that 90% of the healing is cut out because they don't want the skin to close over. Well, what I figured out was I was I soak my foot after I take a shower in an Epsom salt solution, lukewarm, nothing special. But Epsom salts is antiseptic in solution. It also has magnesium sulfate that helps the healing process. So, so what I'm doing is now is that I'm soaking my foot after I take a shower, usually every day, for about 15, 20 minutes, sometimes half an hour. And then I hobble over to the bed, use a towel to keep my foot separated from the floor, and I lie down in my wife, uh, then applies Neosporin, uh, topical vitamin E, and some aloe vera, and some more uh, antibiotic soaked and she puts it on my feet and, it, and it's, it's doing very well.
Okay, so I understand your feeling. Okay, and this is my wife, and she was the one that insisted I go to the doctor. Uh, to have the deep breathing done because she's having a problem with her foot, and so she's believing the doctors. Well, I can understand their feeling of lack of control. Okay, when I had my finger, okay, just a nick of it prevented me from doing things. So yes, you, you're right to be worried about losing some part of your foot. At the same time, you got to realize the doctors don't know what to do. I have a video about how to reduce your resistance to insulin, which has to do with toxins and you get rid of toxins. I look at reading up on it every day. So, yes, I understand your, your concern. I'm concerned too. But now, second time around, I realized there, I should have made this video the last time around. The thing is, I guess, my experience with Doc, oh, I'm the son of a doctor. My brother's a doctor, and the thing that I know is there's limitations to what doctors can do and what they can know. And absolutely, the thing that you have to do is be proactive. Okay, so one of the things that I would do, especially if you're having an infection issue, when you take a shower, don't bother putting on the plastic, don't bother, uh, and this is a saying that you shouldn't have the boot, okay, is that you should take a regular shower, get a, and everything can get wet, everything can get infected, and then do the Epsom salt soak. There's lots of stuff on the, on the web about how to make a solution to soak it in. see how you do. You don't have to stop to do breeding. You can, you can go ahead and do that. And that's what I did. I went ahead the last time. It's just going to take longer. Okay. And, and I will tell you, at the end, last December, I had, I had a wound and went into the hospital September 29th. December 12th, I told the doctor I didn't want to have to do breathing anymore. So what he did was he discharged me. In other words, I wasn't his patient anymore. And my wife was worried, but when I went to see the other doctor, who was a podiatrist, he said in January, oh, you're cured. And so he discharged me also. So that's my experience. I thought I would share it with you. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for anything. This is not really for you. This is for me and for my karma for not putting forth this video before. So thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Good luck with what you're doing. I have some other videos about how to reduce your diabetes to zero. I took my blood sugar this morning. It was 109. And then get, I'm going to get a letter from the blood sugar test. And I'm going to have an A1C below 5.
I'll post it on on the other website where I have that. If you have questions, go ahead and write to me. I'll be glad to answer them. Sometimes it takes me a while to get back to you. Thank you for your time again, and God bless.